it is not guaranteed at all that if you have a drug for a certain target and you have different tumors but who have the same target that this drug will work against all those different tumors. We hoped that would be true in targeted therapies in personalized cancer medicine, but we know now this is absolutely not true. Mutations have their function within the context of the organ of origin. And so there are limitations to what we can expect from targeted agents. Oh boy. So, so the world is much more complex. And this is a melanoma cell with a BRAF mutation. And you can see that one mutation can make so many changes in different domains that it's clear that you cannot block this cell with just one drug. So, so the importance is that, on the other hand, the revolution in melanoma therapy is to use the immune system. And why do we have a, a, an immunotherapy revolution nowadays? It's because we have a completely new understanding of the functioning of the immune system in cancer patients. What we used to do was give activating molecules and activate an, act, an initiation of an immune response. Activate the activator. For instance, with interleukin-2, or with interferon alpha, or with vaccines. But activate the activator did not really work, because the central problem in the functioning of the immune system in cancer patients is that it's blocked, it is inhibited. And that new molecules, new monoclonal antibodies, they unblock the immune system by inhibiting inhibitors. That leads to breaking tolerance, and breaking tolerance is the whole new concept of doing immunotherapy these days. Well, this is not really working so well. So we have two key molecules. This is a T lymphocyte. On the T lymphocyte, you have activating receptors and you have inhibiting receptors. If you have a linkage with an activating receptor, the T cell will become a cytotoxic T cell and will start proliferating. And it will create an army of activated T cells that can kill cancer cells. But if you make a linkage to these inhibitory molecules, ligands, then you will shut down the T cells. And so the army of activated T cells will not further grow, will not grow bigger, and the function is neutralized, it's shut down. In the immune system, you need an activating component and you need a down-regulating component. Now, in cancer, what we want to avoid is the down-regulation of the immune system. And for that, two crucial monoclonal antibodies have been developed, anti-CTLA-4, uh, more well-known as ipilimumab, and anti-PD-1 known mostly as either nivolumab or pembrolizumab. So these molecules avoid that the T cell function goes down. What, what have we seen with ipilimumab, with anti-CTLA-4? Well, in melanoma, the most important observation has been this observation. This is about 5,000 metastatic melanoma patients. And you see that with only four doses of ipilimumab, you see that 20% actually are alive at three years, at four years, at five years, but also at 10 years. And before, with chemotherapy, 
we had a five-year survival of about 4%, and now we have a five-year and even a 10-year survival of 20%. This means that this group of patients was cured by the fact that their immune system was unblocked and that the cytotoxic T cells in their programming phase are not inhibited but grow to a full army of cytotoxic T cells that can cure this fraction of patients, 20%. Oh God. This now also has been demonstrated to work in the adjuvant setting. So in lymph node positive melanoma patients, adjuvant therapy with ipilimumab also leads to a benefit. These are the ipilimumab treated patients and these are the placebo treated patients in adjuvant therapy. And this is relapse free survival but this year, in, at the ESMO Congress, we will report the significant impact on overall survival with adjuvant ipilimumab therapy in patients who <coughs> are lymph node positive melanoma patients, so stage three patients. So I will not go into further details here for ipilimumab. Oh, God. But I will address, sorry, I will address the other molecule that unblocks the immune system, and these are anti-PD-1, anti-PD-L1 molecules. And these are really the drugs of the year, not only when they f first emerged in 2013, but every year, and also over the next two years, there are a number of indications that are being approved for anti-PD-1 in the treatment of solid tumors. With anti-CTLA-4, we were unblocking the inhibition of the T-cell programming. With anti-PD-1, anti-PD-L1, we are unblocking the shutdown mechanism of um, activated uh, cytotoxic T cells at the tumor site. So what happens at the tumor site is that when cytotoxic T cells arrive in the metastases and are ready to kill tumor cells, they are being neutralized, they are being shut down by tumor cells because they express PD-L1. They interact with PD-1 on the T cell and that means that the T cell will no longer function. It's being neutralized. If you put in between an anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibody or an anti-PD-L1 monoclonal antibody, you avoid this interaction. And so cytotoxic T cells at the tumor site now can go on and kill um, uh, tumor cells. This has been discovered to be the key mechanism to make the immune system work and avoid its sub, um, of, uh, suppression. So what have we seen with anti-PD-1? Well, with anti-PD-1, the two main molecules are nivolumab of bristol-myers-squibb and pembrolizumab of Merck. And What we see, and the data for uh, the data for nivolumab and for pembrolizumab are the same. Sorry, but you see about a 50 to 70 percent response rate with these molecules. But the important thing is that this is not only true for all melanoma patients. So independent of having a BRAF mutation, yes or no, or having other types of mutations, it doesn't matter. It's true for all melanomas. 
But the important thing is that when you are responding, you will just continue to respond and continue to respond. I told you that with a BRAF inhibitor, the median duration of the response was about four and a half months. The median duration for all melanoma patients with metastatic melanoma treated with anti-PD-1 is two years. So now you can expect a completely different impact on overall survival. And I show that here. This is metastatic melanoma patients. This is chemotherapy. And this is just treatment with one anti-PD-1 molecule, in this case with nivolumab. And just to show the difference in activity and importance of the drug, the blue lines are DTIC, decarbazine chemotherapy treated patients. The red line is BRAF inhibitor for BRAF mutant melanoma. In 50% of melanoma patients, you have this. The brown line is for all melanoma patients treatment with anti-PD-1. And you can see that this is a completely different situation. It's a revolution in the treatment of melanoma. It means that now you see Oh, God, 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 God. This I don't want to see. Sorry. It means that now, with just the treatment of anti-PD-1, we see five-year survival of 40%. Now, five-year survival used to be 4%, and treatment with this monoclonal antibody, anti-PD-1, ten tenfold improves the overall survival at uh, five years. So, what has also been shown is that anti-PD-1 is more effective than anti-CTLA-4 when you use it as a single drug. But as I will tell you later, to combine these two drugs, we see extraordinary efficacy. So, hey, what has happened here? Anyway, the the phenomenon that we have never seen before with immunotherapy or not even with most chemotherapeutic drugs is that anti-PD-1 is effective against many different tumor types. And in this overview, it shows efficacy against melanoma, lung cancer, head and neck cancer, bladder cancer, gastric cancer, triple negative breast cancer, and um, Hodgkin lymphoma, but I'll show you some of the details. This is, in second line, lung cancer patients, anti-PD-1 compared to Texotere. So a big difference where you now see emerging a 20% uh, of uh, lung cancer patients that are going to be long-term survivors. It is also true for non-squamous non-small cell lung cancer, where you see also anti-PD-1 having a significant impact on overall survival. But it is important to look at PD-L1 expression at the tumor. If the PD-L1 expression is less than 1% or less than 5% or less than 10%, it's not enough for the anti-PD-1 to be active. If it's more than 5 more than 10% expression you see that the impact of anti pd1 therapy is major and so in the end we expect it to be used for all patients with more than 10% pdl1 expression for the other drug pembrolizumab we see the same phenomenon impact of anti pd1 compared to uh, texotere therapy in lung cancer patients. We see exactly the same curve for head and neck cancer patients, squamous head and neck uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, cancers, and we see again 
that anti-PD-1 has a significant impact compared to Texotir. It doubles the overall survival at a year from, at one year from 16 to 36 uh, percent. So lung cancer and head and neck cancer respond exactly in the same way. We now know that also mesothelioma has a very similar response rate. We have patients with gastric cancer. My God. Yeah. We have patients with gastric cancer who have failed two lines of chemotherapy, who have a median survival expectancy rate of only three to four months, where 50% of the gastric cancer patients have a one-year control of tumor response and actually have a survival curve that have a, a, a control rate of over 25% at two years. The same thing is true for renal cell cancer, which I will skip because this is taking too much time. This is an anti-PDL1 treatment, atezolimab, for bladder cancer. Again, you can see that about 50% of patients with bladder cancer will respond. Bladder cancer is not responsive to any chemotherapy, basically. And the duration of the response rates are, again, between one and a half and two years. And this I will skip as well, because I just want to show you this slide. These are Hodgkin lymphoma patients who have failed five lines of therapy. The last line of therapy being a bone marrow transplantation. These are patients who have no treatments available anymore. They were treated with anti-PD-1 and 86% had a response rate, 20% a complete response rate, none of which, none of these patients have relapsed. And almost 50% have a partial response rate, 80% of those patients have not relapsed. This means that anti-PD-1, in this case pembrolizumab, but the same report is there for nivolumab, anti-PD-1 will eventually become first-line treatment for all Hodgkin melanoma patients. This I will skip, but I will make this point. Look at this slide. Anti-PD-1 is the most important drug in the history of cancer medicine. Why? Because within two years' time, it has been approved and shown important survival benefit in melanoma, in renal, in bladder, in all types of lung cancer, in mesothelioma, in head and neck cancer, in esophageal and stomach cancer, we now have seen the first reports on its efficacy in hepatocellular carcinoma, in MSI colorectal cancers, in all different type of tumors who have a DNA mismatched repair deficiency. This will now become the most important screening tool for solid tumors to define what is the likelihood that they will respond to anti-PD-1 anal cancer, Merkel cell, and Hodgkin. All these tumor types will see approval of anti-PD-1 before the year 2018. So we have never seen anything like this in the history of medicine. The impact on my cancer center is so big that, Jesus Christ, the, the, the impact on my cancer center is so big that we have 120 chairs and beds in outpatient chemotherapy. There are three sessions a day. The whole Thursday, that's 360 sessions, are completely dedicated now to anti-PD-1 therapy. We give only one drug on Thursday to 360 patients, and it's anti-PD-1. The whole thing needs to be reorganized because these patients receive their treatment every two or three weeks with a short intravenous uh, infusion. The last slide is about that you can combine 
these molecules, anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1. And what you see there is that the combination gives unprecedented response rates for immunotherapy above 70%. And that we now see emerging overall survival curves for melanoma patients of an estimated between 50 and 60% at five years. So that we will now cure the majority of metastatic melanoma patients. This has also been shown in a randomized trial, combo versus anti-PD-1 alone and ipilimumab alone. And this is just progression-free survival. But you see that the combo uh, gives control for progression-free survival in the majority of patients beyond 18, beyond 18 months. It also means that the time is now there to not only combine anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1, but to see how you can combine an inhibitor with an activator. And many of these combo studies are presently ongoing. Many other studies are also ongoing, where immunotherapy is combined with other treatment modalities. Certain chemotherapeutics that lead to immunogenic cell death, radiotherapy that leads to immunogenic cell death, and certain targeted therapies that can lead to immunogenic cell death, and where the treatment is followed by immunotherapy with anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1. So the last slide is, what do I foresee to happen over the next coming years? The development of amino combos will dominate drug development. Breaking tolerance is the central theme of um, improving drug development, and the concept of breaking tolerance will get the Nobel Prize, I think, next year. These anti-PD-1 molecules are going to be present in virtually all combination therapy approaches for the majority of different solid tumors in the future. We still may need also anti-CTLA-4 to enhance the survival tail effect of the curves. MSI, or mismatched uh, repair deficiency, uh, may be the best predictive screening factor that will emerge and will dominate our screening tools for patients with metastatic tumors in the near future. And we will cure more than 50% of metastatic melanoma patients. Actually, that's already happening right now with the combination of anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1. So anti-PD-1 is the biggest revolution ever. And uh, this is what we uh, discuss as the current revolution in immunotherapy. I thank you for your attention. OK, good. Thank you very much for your presentation.